Here's your host, Kevin Conover. Bring your time and bring your shame. Bring your Welcome to Educate for Life. I'm your host, Kevin Conover. My website's educateforlife.org. I hope you can uh, follow us. We're streaming on Facebook today, and uh, this program will also air on Saturday from 2 to 3 p.m. Uh, this morning, Threatening Messages, this is, the, this is the title of a news article from Fox 5, Threatening Messages Spray Painted on Rancho Bernardo High Walls. And it goes down to explain about 20 threatening graffiti messages claiming there would be a school shooting Monday were found spray painted around Rancho Bernardo High School's campus Monday morning. That is this morning prompting a large-scale police presence and an investigation, an officer said. In photographs posted on social media, the graffiti giant or the graffiti made apparent references to the deadly shooting on Valentine's Day at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida, and threatened a shooting would happen at noon Monday on the campus uh, in Rancho Bernardo. And there's all kinds of, uh, they have some photos up here on the web. It says Florida was nothing. And then there's a reference to the KKK, there's a swastika, uh, all kind of stuff uh, that's just horrible uh, that, that uh, you can't imagine somebody would actually put this on the walls. And my guest today is Nate Landis. Nate is with the Urban Youth Collaborative. He earned a BA from Eastern University in Sociology and Youth Ministry, also an MDiv from Gordon-Conwell Theological Seminary with an Urban Ministry Emphasis. Um, and he heads up a ministry that he started called Urban Youth Collaborative that reaches into the public schools and ministers the love of Jesus Christ to students all over uh, the county. Now in 97 schools. Is that right, Nate? That's right. Yeah. Five in Mexico and 92 in San Diego. That is absolutely phenomenal. Um, so if you have questions for Nate, please feel free to uh, hop in and listen. Uh, he's a great resource about because he's right there in the schools. He's dealing with the students on a regular basis. If you want to call in and ask a question, the number is 866-577-2473. Or you can just type your question right on to the internet on Facebook. We're streaming, streaming live on Facebook. And I'd be uh, happy to address your question to Nate, whatever the case. But Nate, what I wanted to ask you is, you know, there's this, what seems to be, and um, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but there seems to be an increase in school shootings um, going on uh, year after year. It seems like uh, it's definitely not going down. And we just had this big school shooting in Florida. And uh, I was looking at the news on what was going on there. But I'm just curious about your perspective. Somebody, how long have you been in the high schools now um, ministering to youth? We've been doing this since 2009 as an organization. And before that, I've been in public schools doing ministry as a youth worker for about 10 years now. We started in 2006, so uh, just a little over 10 years now. Okay, so that's yeah. quite a while. So you're looking at how many years total? What is that? 12. Oh, 12, yeah. 12 years. So yeah. so in your, your, your analysis of this situation where we're seeing um, these kinds of things, how do you, you know, why is it happening? And I mean, what a lot of people want to know is what's the solution? We Trump just came out and said, hey, we need to uh, professionally train and arm uh, particular teachers uh, to deal with this kind of situation. Uh, give us your uh, perspective on these things. Well, I think we have to make the most of every opportunity because we're living in dangerous times. Mm -hmm. I live in the inner city where kids often are in, in places where they're afraid of gun violence and walking home from school and gang activity, all of that is on the forefront of their minds. Yeah. And I think this just goes to show us that sin can go anywhere uh, beyond a, a, quote, dangerous neighborhood where now every every young person yeah, has Rancho to be. Yeah, Rancho Bernardo is not typically Yeah, you don't you think, think of that of as, as an inner city, hardcore sort of situation. But yeah. uh, I think the need for heart change and the need for people to... Uh, come to Christ is is more real than ever, and that transcends every neighborhood. That's a universal need, and and I think we have people now that are trying to copycat or or threaten. I think fortunately, the situation you mentioned was a hoax. If yeah. the date and time were specified on the graffiti, and we're now past that, and we're not we're not zooming into live news coverage. Yeah. Fortunately, so now they had a lot think, of police. I heard they brought a lot of police. Yeah, there was to the a school. heavy police presence, from what I can tell. We had one staff member in that neighborhood update me, and the police were there, and there were lots of uh, people being vigilant, and and lots of people praying. And so, fortunately, it was a hoax. But I think we need more kids who are not just pretending to do evil, but that can plot good for one another. Mm. And that's what we're interested in focusing on. Cause I know if you don't have anything to live for, then all these other things to be against, uh, come up and, and they might 
These kids just might be looking for something that that's worth giving their lives to in, yeah. instead of watching all these other people taking life and watching uh, people going out after other people groups and so on and being able to love one another is really where life is at. Yeah. That's where that's where the the joy and purpose is found. Well, I that's a um that's a huge uh you know statement you're making that hey, you know the solution here is Jesus Christ and I think you and I both agree on that uh wholeheartedly. Right. Um but then when it comes to putting um you know our, our feet to the street here and saying okay, so how does that happen? Uh the question is is uh, can we really make a big enough uh, difference to have an impact where you're going to begin to see, um, you know, that reverse, that change where you're going to see less school shootings, you're going to see less school violence, you're going to see uh, more kids embrace that. I mean, um, from a political position, you know, we're coming up on an election year here in San Diego. Um, if you were to run for office, would it be, hey, let's get Jesus more in school? If if uh, Nate Landis was running for a school board or something, would you run on that ticket? Well, I think I make a bigger difference outside of the political fray because it's pretty clear that when you get connected in, in politics, you've got to appease some special interest to get somewhere. Yeah. And then once you arrive, then you've got to pay back those that helped get you there. And, and I like being sort of apolitical and, and solutions based with with the work that I do. Yeah. And I I think I would I would purposely run on on a ticket of problem solving and, and trying to solve specific issues and find superordinate goals that, that both sides can work on and get together. I think we can all agree we want safer schools and we all want uh, kids to achieve and we all want kids to be able to be all that they're capable of being. And I think I enjoy, I'm having too much fun doing what I'm doing now to, yeah. to dive into politics, but there are a lot of real problems we're trying to face as a society. And I want to be at the table with politicians and school board people and pastors and other leaders in the community to try to solve those. So yeah. we're looking for people that have uh, their, the best interest of kids at heart and, yeah. and hopefully they can approach it without being divisive. And you are, what's interesting is um, you are doing stuff that, and I, I want our, our listeners to hear about what you're doing because I think it's phenomenal and I think it's a real world example of what can actually be done um, when you just uh, stop talking about things and just start doing. And uh, it's a blessing to hear what you're doing with Urban Youth Collaborative. But um, before we go there, uh, when I previously had you on the show, uh, we had been discussing that you actually were dealing with a lawsuit. There was a person who was trying to get all the Bible clubs out of the San Diego Unified School Club, the uh, San Diego Unified Schools. And um, can you update us on uh, how that's gone and uh, how um, ha has that cleared up? And is that all? Started? Yeah. So it's been resolved. And just to clarify, there was not a lawsuit coming at us, but a parent complaint from a very well-connected lobbyist parent that raised the legal question of whether it's okay for kids to have a student leg club on a campus. And so they were trying to make it sound illegal. Mm -hmm. That's where the legal questions came in. But fortunately, the law and the Lord were clearly on our side. The only lawsuit actually was from the seventh graders at a particular middle school whose club was illegally banned for six months. They had to threaten a federal lawsuit against San Diego Unified School District in order for the district to do the right thing and allow the club to reopen. Wow. So I was proud of these kids with uh, braces and their their first couple months in seventh grade, first introduction to middle school. <laughs> Talk you about had it's like welcome welcome, to the real yeah, world. welcome to middle school. <laughs> and by the way, the district's going to try to bully you and and run out the clock on the school year and hope you just give up. So these kids heroically had to submit five different versions of the application uh, because their school was ground zero for this issue that the uh, district was trying to just force and scare the students and administrators into not allowing campus clubs that were religiously based. So yeah. just quick, quick review. The kids submitted five versions of the app and each time they turned it down. One time it was because they didn't have enough faculty advisors and you only need one. They had one yeah. and the school made them get two. They went out and got an extra one. And then the next time they turned it in, they said, well, it's not on official school letterhead. And then the kids said, well, the reason that was the case is because you didn't allow us to receive the official application. You purposely withheld yeah. it. So they turned one in and then they finally put it on the right letterhead after they got it, turned it in again. And this time they said, you've got some penmanship and uh, penmanship errors and some typos in this. It was, it was handwritten. So 
every middle school application in the county, I think, has some yeah, exactly. penmanship errors. You're a teacher, yeah. <laughs> so you and I can understand that. So the, they turned it in again, and then the next time, the parents said, I mean, sorry, the school said, looks like there's some adult handwriting on this document. We can't accept that. So finally, they turned it in a fourth time. Then the, that time, it came back rejected again because they, they were very clear at this point. They crossed out the word Christian in the Christian Club application, and then they crossed off the word Jesus Christ in the club purpose statement that the kids had come up with. Wow. And so then these parents were trying to be really, uh, really patient, and they wanted to make sure they weren't jumping to conclusions. Yeah. And then once it came back, I think that was the fifth version of the application, actually. And so by the time that came back, they said, look, this is just plain and simple religious discrimination. There's oh, yeah. no other way to address it. There's nothing else to do. So they had to decide at that point, do we just let our club die and roll over or do we push back? And so they retained the same lawyer that does pro bono work for our organization. Yeah. And then Dean Broyles. They, yeah, Dean Broyles. He and was so, just on the show a little while ago. Good, good guy. Yeah. Very thankful for him. Uh, and so he was willing to take their case on. And after stalling for almost six months, six days later, the district wrote back and said, please be advised the club application has been approved. Yeah, <laughs> surprise, and surprise. they're allowed to meet. But <laughs> oh my that's, gosh. that's all they answer to, unfortunately, yeah. is the threat of force instead of just doing the right thing from the beginning. Yeah, that's So tough. we're thankful that the kids had the audacity to continue pushing back and the resolve to push forward even when others were trying to discourage them. And then it also, I think, emboldened student leaders throughout our our city. Yeah, because, I want to catch up on this, yep. but I got to come up on here on a break you here. Bet. So stay with us. We're going to be right back. I'm with Nate Landis with Urban Youth Collaborative. We're talking about guns in schools and Jesus in schools. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Jason Hall, president of Team Home Loans, a branch of Synergy One Lending. I just want to take this opportunity to thank Kevin Conover for the profound impact he's had on mine and my wife's spiritual life, as well as being an incredible teacher while our kids were his students. His knowledge and passion have taught us all how important it is to be defenders of our faith. It's our honor and privilege to support Kevin and his show. It is our sincere hope and prayer that you will continue to learn to be defenders of your faith through Kevin's radio show and through his Educate for Life teaching. Thank you, Kevin, from the Hall family and Team Home Loans. Educate for Life helps you build your life on the rock. LG Equipment helps builders build on good soil. Luke Gibson's team at LG Equipment is your local source for grading, demolition, hauling, and more. Learn about their bulk water services from trucks to tankers to towers at rentwatertower.com. Get your questions answered. Call LG Equipment at 619-988-0924. Learn more at lgequipment.com. 619-988-0924. Do you have one button espresso machines in your home or business? They make delicious coffee drinks, but they're not maintenance free. Express Fix Coffee is San Diego's source for coffee and espresso machine repair, sales, and service. Call Dave Martin at Express Fix Coffee for new and used espresso machines, repairs, parts, and accessories. They'll save you time and money. Call Express Fix Coffee at 619-825-3985. Learn more at expressfixcoffee.com. How can you live in San Diego and miss out on enjoying the water? Fast Lane Kayaking sells popular Hobie Cat kayaks that you pedal, not paddle. That means your hands are left free for fishing and fun. Just throw these on your roof rack. They're light and they're easy to use and maintain. Just rinse them off. Try one free on a demo ride. For 36 years, Ron and Debbie Lane have served San Diego with fun, family-friendly water sports of all kinds. Learn more. FastLaneSailing.com. 619-222-0766. When you need tires or service, count on Conover Tires, Wheels, and Service in Oceanside for a full range of affordable options in all the brands you trust. See their great customer reviews and special offers online. Hours Tuesday through Friday, 7.30 to 5.30 and Saturdays, 7.30 to 5. Call Dan and his team at 760-439-1631. Conover Tires, Wheels, and Service, 2405 Oceanside Boulevard in Oceanside, 760-439-1631. I will cast my cares on you. Thanks for listening today. This is Educate for Life. I'm your host, Kevin Conover. My website is educateforlife.org. You can pick up a recording of this program as well as many others. Had all kinds of uh, fantastic guests on the show. Um, not too long ago, I just had Ray Comfort on the show, if you know who he is, with Living Waters. 
And uh, he not uh, not too long ago produced a movie called Exit, The Appeal of Suicide, talking about the suicide epidemic in our country also. Very tragic. Um, suicide is now ranked as uh, the second uh, cause of death, second highest cause of death among young people, traffic accidents being um, the only one greater. And uh, that was a fantastic interview. Very encouraging, uh, even though it's a depressing subject, but very encouraging. My guest today is Nate Landis, and we are talking about Urban Youth Collaborative. If you haven't heard of his uh, ministry, it's uh, absolutely phenomenal. There's all kinds of ways you can get involved. Uh, UYC.org, is that right? UYC? Yep. UYC.org is Nate's website if you want to get involved. And they are now on 97 schools. Um, I had Nate on the air uh, maybe a year ago, a year and a half ago, somewhere around there. And um, and uh, we were just talking about the lawsuit that's now, or not lawsuit, but the, the whole uh, controversy. Are we allowed to talk about the school that it was or anything now? Or is that... I think Hello. we can, yeah. Yeah. Correa Junior High School, right, is mm -hmm. the one. I, I actually attended that high school. Oh, did you really? Yeah. No kidding. <laughs> yeah, so funny. And uh, and so when I heard about that in the news, I was immediately uh, interested in, whoa, what in the world is going on here? Um, I don't remember any controversy back then. But but so now I've heard that there's going to be a book forthcoming about this whole issue too. Is that true? That's right. Yeah, I'm finishing a book called God Wants His Kids Back, and the subtitle is Schools of Thought to Reach a Lost Generation. And obviously, the the subtitle is a play on words to encourage churches to take advantage of the opportunity to support their students that want to share the good news of Christ in schools. Because like we were talking about earlier, these are dark times. People are looking for hope, and there really isn't any solution for the change of a human heart other than Jesus. Mm. And you can try to legislate things, and you can put boundaries and barriers uh, around, and, and I think we need to as a society, but ultimately we want to see hearts changed. And, and the only way to do that is through Christ's work in somebody and, and his supernatural transformation that only he can bring. Yeah. And so um, I, I think that's important what you're saying there um, as we approach this issue. Um, and there are, there are Christian teachers, there are Christian administrators. Um, I was told by uh, Eric Buer that 50% of administrators and teachers claim to be Christian. So there's a lot of um, opportunity to influence and, and influence, but a lot of people are a little bit, of, uh, you know, have a little bit of fear about, okay, am I crossing any legal lines right, here? And, right. And this now, do you um, do you work with teachers and administrators in that regard? Is Urban we Youth do. Collaborative? Yeah, we are all uh, dependent on having a faculty advisor at every club that's student led. If we do a facility rental agreement, we don't have to have a faculty member involved. We always welcome that, but. Mm. The clubs that are student-led during the lunch time or after school have to have a faculty advisor there. They can't uh, teach and preach, so to speak, but they're right. helping to facilitate the meeting in terms of making sure everyone's safe and everybody's following the rules and, and having a good time. Yeah. And then they can be supportive of the students, but the kids have to really take the lead. And I think what a lot of churches and students don't realize is that there really are robust legal freedoms for students that want to talk about the big issues of life and talk about faith on a public school campus, they don't lose their identity when they step onto a school. There's yeah. not some wet dry act that sucks out all of who they are and then they have to go through the day and then they get it all back at the end of the day. Yeah. Because no one else is going to school devoid of all of those commitments that they have. And I think a public school is a wonderful place to make good conversations happen and, and hash out what you believe and and if you know where you stand, you yeah. can respectfully and persuasively present your case. Yeah, and, without and so, becoming hostile. Yeah, exactly. I, I felt like when I was in school, um, it was great because I got to hear so many different perspectives that I hadn't he heard. I was kind of out of my bubble. Right. You know, my, my friends, the people that I agreed with, and it gave me the opportunity to bounce ideas off them. So what do you think about this? And what do you think about that? And it really helped to develop my own thinking about, hey, you know, what is truth? And, Absolutely. And how do I come to, to know truth? And those sorts of questions. Yeah. So uh, that's very interesting. And the title of your book, again, God Wants His Kids Back. That's um, right. When you say God wants his kids back, it, obviously the title infers that somebody took his kids. So what are you, what are you saying there as, as it pertains to, you know, reaching the kids? Yeah, in the, in the I'm thinking of it from the perspective of a father. And when I was first, uh, I've got five kids now, I told you yeah. earlier, and I like to come away from the house and do radio shows with you because yeah. I get a moment to breathe. <laughs> Wait, right? tell, tell our listeners yeah. so they can pray for you. Yeah, yep. so I've got five kids under the age of 10, 
and three are mine, two are foster kids that my wife and I just took in. And so, okay, you guys know how to pray for Nate. That's Everybody right. listening out there, yeah, uh, please do. <laughs> he's got a full house, so. keeping us on <laughs> our pray toes. For, pray and for his wife, right? On our toes and on our knees. <laughs> yeah, and it's been a fun adventure. But uh, when I was first a dad for the very first time on April nineteenth, two thousand and eight, my son Russell was born, and it was the greatest day of my life. I was crying, looking into his eyes, and making all these commitments to him. And two hours into the best day of my life two nurses came rushing into the delivery room and they slapped an electronic ankle bracelet on my son's ankle. And they said, Mr. Landis, while you are holding your son here in this hospital, don't take a wrong turn because if you do go down the wrong hallway with your kid in your arms, we're monitoring his every move electronically and this entire hospital facility will immediately go into lockdown. This was right here in San Diego County. So I was thinking, wow, this is intense. My kid's only two hours old and he's already on parole. Like I failed as a father immediately. So I asked him, what happened? Why? Word of the state. Why did you guys put an electronic ankle bracelet, a baby low jack on my kid's ankle? Yeah. And they said, the nurse told me one out of 2,000 kids in California get stolen from hospitals. And I've I've done research and and I've actually found, you know, one out of 200,000 was one site. And then another was you know, so rare that one, one source said since 1983 in our whole country, there've been less than 200 abductions. And so you look at that and say, there's obviously a problem or people wouldn't be doing something about it. Sure. And I'm glad hospitals have taken it seriously to say on our shift, losing one kid's entirely unacceptable. Yeah. The reason the book title is phrased the way it is, is because if you look at kids in public schools and compare youth group attendance to school attendance, and you give every kid who's ever come to a youth group or sneers, sneeze nearby the church credit for being saved, which is a generous assumption, yeah. you, you realize we're losing nine out of every 10 kids. Mm. And so I'm looking at that saying, if California's hospitals with a much less statistical problem are willing to take definitive action, when will the church step up and say, we're willing to do something about the kids that aren't going to hear the gospel otherwise? Absolutely. If we all retreat to... Uh, homeschool and we all retreat to private school. I understand the doctrinal purity concerns. I understand the the influences and the curriculum that we may not be supportive of as Christians. Sure. But the vast majority of kids are swimming in the public schools yeah. and we can't pull out all the way or else there's no hope to get them back. My guest today is Nate Landis and he is an expert on ministering to kids in public schools. He's been doing it for uh, more than 12 years now. So stay with us. We're going to continue to have this conversation. I'm going to look over some of the texts here on uh, Facebook. We're streaming live. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. Before I bring my need, I will bring my heart. Hi, this is Kevin Conover. Will you please donate to Educate for Life so we can share the truth of God's word with kids in public schools? You can donate online at donate to efl.org. The Bible used to be read in public schools on a regular basis prior to the 1960s. But today, most kids are completely clueless when it comes to the content and the historical and scientific accuracy of the Bible. Please help us by donating online at donate to efl.org. Hi, this is Jason Hall, president of Team Home Loans, a branch of Synergy One Lending. I just want to take this opportunity to thank Kevin Conover for the profound impact he's had on mine and my wife's spiritual life, as well as being an incredible teacher while our kids were his students. His knowledge and passion have taught us all how important it is to be defenders of our faith. It's our honor and privilege to support Kevin and his show. It is our sincere hope and prayer that you will continue to learn to be defenders of your faith through Kevin's radio show and through his Educate for Life teaching. Thank you, Kevin, from the Hall family and Team Home Loans. Hi, I'm Marissa Conover, and I would love to help you buy or sell your home. I've worked as a realtor for more than 13 years, and as a San Diego native, my passion and experience will help make your move as peaceful as can be. Call me at 619-251-1577. That's 619-251-1577. Or visit conoverhomes.com. 
This is Throughout All Ages Ministry with Joe and Stacy. We would like to equip you to share the gospel with confidence in a biblical and effective way. We would like to teach you through the proclamation of the gospel. Whether you're the skeptic, God who created you said that he has made himself known to you so that you are without excuse. One-on-one evangelism. How do you think you can get to heaven? I've never really thought about it, but I've always thought of, you know, doing good. For more information, go to throughoutallages.com, like us on Facebook, or visit us at YouTube at Throughout All Ages. I'm giving it all away. No more high. Thanks again for tuning in to Educate for Life. I'm your host, Kevin Conover. My website's educateforlife.org. And uh, my website is all about a defense of the Word of God. So I'm an apologetics teacher. I've been doing this for 11 years. And uh, my heart breaks for the kids that don't get to hear the good news of Jesus Christ and the evidence for the truth of the Bible. Um, and so uh, Nate and I are, are kind of uh, very similar in our hearts, uh, uh, brothers from another mother here, in, in a sense that uh, he's directly in the public schools and I'm teaching kids in a private school about the stuff that they need to hear. But I've been into the public schools. I was just at Mount Miguel in one of your groups, uh, FCA with Jason. Yeah, I heard um, about that. Yeah, and uh, it was great. And the kids, um, it was it was very interesting to me, you know, where they're coming from. I, I had a lot of thoughts uh, leaving there and everything and where they're at. Yeah. Um, I My feeling, the impression I got was, hey, these kids um, really are dying for relationships. Mm-hmm. They're dying to be connected to somebody right. that cares about them. And there's a lot of good information I have to share about the truth of God's word, but they need to know, hey, um, somebody loves me and cares about That's me. That's right. And so when you're talking about, hey, I'm waiting for these churches to get involved, what you're talking about is, hey, we need the relationship. Right. Absolutely. I've heard it said well that kids won't care what you know until they know how much you care. Exactly. And the word became flesh in Christ. God could have just rained Bibles out of the sky in lots of different languages throughout history, but Jesus became flesh. And that's what the Bible was written about was his interactions with people Mm. and healing the sick, raising the dead, feeding the hungry, forgiving the sinner. He did all of those things through the context of a relationship. Yeah. And that's that's what I love about public schools is because you you are forced into this sea of all these different people from different backgrounds and, and you've got to figure out how to survive, make some friends, give and receive love and, yeah. and, and graduate and, and figure it out. And it's a great mi- microcosm for life and mm. preparation for, for the real world. And I do think that public schools also provide kids who have faith an opportunity for it to really grow and be defined. Yeah. Because if you live in a bubble with good intentions, the danger of the bubble is illustrated by the biosphere experiment. I think it was the University of Arizona. They created a dome for plant life and they had ideal soil conditions, optimal sunlight. They had the right temperature. Bugs and weeds were eradicated. It oh, was wow. it was like the if a dream for plants. Yeah. And it was <laughs> anything green was supposed to thrive and flourish. And yeah. And I think it was well intended. But what happened, which surprised the scientist, is almost all the plants in the biosphere died. It wasn't for lack of water. It wasn't for high soil quality. It wasn't for plant food being gone. They were missing one thing, Hmm. wind. Wind pushes against the plants and forces them to take a stand and make their roots go deep. Oh, wow. And so public school kids who do stand for Christ and have faith, because there's all these other forces blowing against them, there's, there's the opportunity to do drugs. I remember when I first started UIC uh, at a school near my house, I asked all the kids, how many of you guys, if you want to, know exactly where to get drugs as soon as the bell rings and, and the school is done for the day? Yeah. 60 kids at Lincoln High School raised their hand and said, I know exactly where to find drugs. Yeah. The week before, one of my other pastor colleagues asked about the same number of kids at Morse High School, how many of you guys know exactly where to find your dad how many of you live with mom and dad in your house same house all together every night nobody raised their hand wow so there's all these forces blowing against kids and kids have to figure out how to stand yeah because it's easier to find drugs and dads in our communities yeah and to be able to say i really am going to believe in something there's all these different religious ideas there's kids that believe all these different lifestyles are true and You've got to make a stand and say, I really am going to put my roots down. Yeah. And and that's where I think we we grow in our faith when there's something pushing against us. I don't think you grow in your faith alone. I think salt and light only works in groups. Mm. Lights 
photons travel in, in groups. Yeah. Salt crystals need to be in a group. You can't transform meat with just yeah, one. One, one little piece it's of salt. It's probably going to get <laughs> absorbed by the meat. But yeah. if you have a group of kids who can be salt and light together mm. and, and put their roots down deep, that's when you really do see a small group of kids yeah. transforming a school. And I've got a story I can tell you when we have time, but I've, I've seen it happen. And I know that Christian kids in the public schools will not only be salt and light, but their own faith will be strengthened yeah. through that and process. And I, you know, I, I mean, my own testimony growing up, I went to Point Loma High School and talk about uh, the wind blowing, man. It was, it was a very yeah. adversarial yeah. environment. I was very confident in my faith and outspoken, but the more you speak up, the more people speak, <laughs> speak yeah. back to you. They, so They talk back. Yeah. Right? And so uh, it was very, it, it definitely made me stronger, but I mean, I'm sure, and even my own concern is, um, it's one thing to have some wind blow on you, but it's another thing to have a hurricane just rip you yeah, apart. Absolutely. And that's what we see is a lot of the kids, they're just getting ripped apart. And so the the um there's gotta be a solution here that's uh you know, somewhere in the middle because um I I I would be concerned for my own children to go, um, we homeschool now. Yeah. Um, but it's not because I wanna abandon the kids in the public schools. Sure. I I desperately ninety percent of kids go to public schools. Right. It's extremely frustrating to me that I'm thinking, okay. I have uh, literally 120 students this year that I get uh -huh. to teach. Yeah. There are 23,000 students in East County high schools. And so I look at that and I think to myself, okay, well, if I get to share the truth with 120 kids, praise God. Right, right. But there is no way we can just think that it's going to be okay if these other kids don't get to hear the gospel and right. don't get the opportunity to actually hear the other side of you know, a neutral kind of moral agnosticism uh, versus, hey, there are there's absolute morality. There's lots of evidence for the truth of God and the Word of God. Right. They just don't hear that. Right. 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 So, so um, you're making a difference. Uh, uh, absolutely. Um, you went from last time I talked to you, 80 schools around 80, and now you're up to 97. Right. So people are stepping out. So yeah. what's what's the next step for you? Well, I think continuing to let kids know that they're the ones who will decide the spiritual destiny of their friends. Mm. And, and helping them to feel that urgency and that passion just as strongly or more. Uh, I want them to be concerned about that even more than their prom date and who, who's going to win the football game on Friday night or now it's, it's basketball and baseball season. But what, what does it look like to be in the game spiritually? As an adult, I can't. We do a lot of work with coaches, and I'm a chaplain at several teams, and it's fun on the sidelines on Friday night. Uh, this was a question everybody. I was actually going to ask you about. I was yeah. going to ask you about chaplains in, yes. in schools. Um, you're not a paid chaplain. Right? No, no, we are we are not allowed to be on the payroll because then we would be an agent of the state per se. But we can now, be a volunteer. But, chaplain. but what about what about the fact that the military actually hires chaplains? Yeah, I mean they're not quote an agent of the state. Right in the public school though, the the deal is that you can't you can't be a school official and do any kind of religious but work. is that just a double standard or is Probably. that yeah. because it because i'm thinking to myself hey you've got kids struggling with depression you've Absolutely. got suicide you've got you've got uh kids that that kid that did the school shooting in florida yeah you know they they found out he made a 911 call a few months earlier turning, asking for help asking for yep. help yep and, exactly and yet if there were chaplains in the school that yeah. were readily available yep. to be able to not quote proselytize but be there for the kids when they reach out and have help yeah, and have problems and, and say, i want to know about god yeah, i yeah. want to know if there's a god who cares about me and loves me right i mean i i struggle to understand the rationale that would say we don't want that right there's no other solution and that's what's so funny is they don't want you know they being people that would argue against the work that i do yeah they they wouldn't want us speaking into these situations but then my question would always be well what else do you have to offer yeah exactly. You know, i performed a funeral for a kid who died of sit he had i'm sorry he had a kid who was nine weeks old on a football team here in san diego county lost his son to sids and they called me because i was the only person they knew to turn to and and i've i've been able to perform weddings for football coaches and funerals for players sons and all these things and my question would be what else would you have to offer in those moments of joy and heartbreak if you don't want god's side of the story involved and I'll, I'll share one. This is probably a good time to share this. At, hey, hold on one yep. second, Nate. We're, uh, to be continued. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great teaser right there. Right. Okay. You'll never believe what we'll say next. Oh, yeah. It's going to blow you away. <laughs>
Hi, this is Jason Hall, president of Team Home Loans, a branch of Synergy One Lending. I just want to take this opportunity to thank Kevin Conover for the profound impact he's had on mine and my wife's spiritual life, as well as being an incredible teacher while our kids were his students. His knowledge and passion have taught us all how important it is to be defenders of our faith. It's our honor and privilege to support Kevin and his show. It is our sincere hope and prayer that you will continue to learn to be defenders of your faith through Kevin's radio show and through his Educate for Life teaching. Thank you, Kevin, from the Hall family and Team Home Loans. This is Throughout All Ages Ministry with Joe and Stacy. We would like to equip you to share the gospel with confidence in a biblical and effective way. We would like to teach you through the proclamation of the gospel. Whether you're the skeptic, God who created you said that he has made himself known to you so that you are without excuse. One-on-one evangelism. How do you think you can get to heaven? I've never really thought about it, but I've always thought of, you know, doing good. For more information, go to throughoutallages.com, like us on Facebook, or visit us at YouTube at Throughout All Ages. When you need tires or service, count on Conover Tires, Wheels, and Service in Oceanside for a full range of affordable options in all the brands you trust. See their great customer reviews and special offers online. Hours Tuesday through Friday, 7.30 to 5.30, and Saturdays, 7.30 to 5. Call Dan and his team at 760-439-1631. Conover Tires, Wheels, and Service, 2405 Oceanside Boulevard in Oceanside, 760-439-1631. How much time and money do you spend buying lattes and espresso drinks? Express Fix Coffee invites you to discover super automatic espresso machines for your home or office. Enjoy delicious coffee drinks at the push of a button. Dave Martin and his local team help you choose the perfect machine for you. Call Express Fix Coffee for new or used espresso machines, repairs, parts, or accessories. Learn more online at expressfixcoffee.com. Call Dave at 619-825-3985. There's got to be more. Than- Welcome to Educate for Life. I'm so glad you're listening today. My guest today is Nate Landis with Urban Youth Collaborative. If you want to learn more about his ministry, it's uyc.org. And uh, we are so blessed to have Nate here in San Diego um, doing the ministry he's doing. Um, he really is uh, the fuel behind the fire. 97 uh, campuses in San Diego and a few in Mexico now have... Um, campus Bible clubs because of the efforts of Nate Landis and the people that are working with him. There's, I know you've got a huge team that's working with you now, growing a team. If you would like to join his team, please reach out, uyc.org. Uh, honestly, um, th- these are the kids that are the future of our country, right? The kids that grow up and make the laws, they're the ones that become policemen, firemen. Um, they become uh, you know, the bosses, they run the companies, and where they're at with Christ is going to affect where our country goes. And um, so it's, this is not just uh, eternity, and eternity is most important, but it's also the life we live now, right? That's right. Christ said, I've come that they may have life and have it to the full. So um, pick, let's pick up with the story that you uh, yes, were going to say. Yes, thanks, Kevin. So yeah. recently at, at Morse High School, there were a lot of issues with kids pulling fire alarms and then triggering a mandatory evacuation out to the athletic field. Yeah. Kids figured this out, that they could create oh, this. Shut this down l- their teaching. Yeah, <laughs> I'm bored. Or or in this case, it was, I want to jump somebody. There were a couple oh, reprisals going on where yeah. kids were getting on uh, other kids' nerves and then some you know back and forth stuff going on. So they picked a couple targets and realized it's hard to uh, – defend them if there's all this pandemonium as as the transition is happening out to the athletic field. Oh, wow. So the principal's going, man, I'm not sure what to do or where to turn or what the solution is. So the students from this faith club, this is where I think if you're built on the foundation of Christ, yeah. you can withstand even a hurricane because you're doing it together. And the the parable Jesus tells about the house built on the solid foundation, the winds come the rain's blowing, beat against the house, yeah. but the house built on Christ is firm enough to stand. So these kids said, we're not afraid. We're going to go out into the quad after our Bible club. They, they support the club there on Thursdays at lunchtime, student-led during non-instructional time, voluntary to attend. Those are the three legal variables that have to be in play. Mm-hmm. So these kids gathered in the quad, and 150 of them— 150 150- Christian students? Christian students and people that realized prayer was a solution to drama and trauma on campus and violence. So they're all holding hands in this circle. They invited me that day because they had planned it in advance. And I was just blown away. Teachers were watching. 
administrators were watching. And if you weren't in the circle, Kevin, you were watching the circle. Yeah. <laughs> and if you didn't believe in it, you at least realized it's probably better than anything else. If you're agnostic, prayer can't hurt. Yeah. <laughs> right? If you're an atheist, prayer definitely can't hurt because you're just talking to the air, but maybe it could help. So everyone was there, and I never saw this before. The vice principal brought a megaphone out to these three student leaders who were in the center of this circle. Mm -hmm. They had coordinated the whole thing. And three bold female leaders took turns praying for God's presence, power, and peace to fall on the campus. Wow. And as I'm taking photos, the principal came up to me, and I had never met her before, but I had heard good things about her. Uh, but I didn't know where she stood with respect to all of this. Yeah. And so she said, I saw you taking photos at my school. I said, yes, yes, I was. She said, could I have those, please? I said, <laughs> yes, yes, you can. I wasn't sure where she was going. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then finally she says to me, I'd like to put them on the school website because I think this is so fantastic. <laughs> wow. And I went, wow, right? Because yeah. you and I were just talking earlier about I you wanna, can have. I want to applaud her. You can have <laughs> lots of different perspectives about the work that I do. Mm. And so. It was interesting. So I said to her, this, this is wonderful news. I said, I do this for a living, but let me just give you a little advice. It might be good to mention that it's um, student-led prayer mm -hmm. happening at this school. Yeah. And then the head football coach that we work with closely was standing there too, and he said, it might be good to mention that it was voluntary prayer because <laughs> his, his athletes were all in the circle, but he yeah. didn't want anyone to think that he had forced them yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. And, and of course, love requires freedom, and nobody is going to be forced by God yeah. to follow him either. And we don't want to do something different. So anyway, this was my quote of the year last year. The principal looks back at me and says, I'd love it if someone got up in my grill and told me student-led prayer was a bad idea because then I would ask them to propose a better solution for the problems we've been having on our campus. Wow. Boom, <laughs> right? That's fantastic. And so the adults didn't have the answer. The yeah. kids did. Yeah. And they were the ones leading. Yeah. And so I was able to see them stand against this tide of, drama and trauma at the school, and they were the ones stepping out and making a difference. So yeah. student-led prayer can't be stopped, and it's really exciting to watch. That and is. We've had kids after football games. Um, one of the students at that same high school was a very strong leader and had the composure to pull both teams together uh, for prayer after their football games. It started on a day when a very troubled kid uh, from an opposing school broke another kid's femur. The guy was six foot five. After a play, stomped on his feet. That's like breaking a baseball bat. And then he ripped two other kids down with face masks where he should have been ejected, but it didn't happen. And so instead of strike, counter strike, escalation, yeah, yeah. which normally happens, yeah. this male leader from, from the football team pulled both teams together afterwards and led everyone in prayer. The coaches listened and watched, but the kid was the one That's doing phenomenal. it. That's phenomenal. And it's been well publicized, and it's something that just uh, can't be stopped and shouldn't be because it makes a difference. So my question for you is, is is that kind of activity that you're seeing, would you say that that is um, because of these Bible clubs in the schools? Or or is this, I guess what I'm, I'm asking is, yeah. is, um, is Urban Youth Collaborative, is FCA, because yep. you work with FCA too, We do, right? we partner with FCA closely. Yeah. So are, are you guys together, is, is Christ moving through these groups to facilitate this kind of leadership? Yes. Because that's not typically something a kid's just gonna rise up and be like, right. hey, let's pray. Yeah, right? it so. doesn't happen by accident. And this particular young man who led the prayer time for the football team had been through three years of discipleship. He came to FCA camp, and then there's a track 1.0 after camp that UIC takes kids through. It's a simple uh, four lesson study on your relationship with God, how to have a devotional time, how to confess sin, how to uh, let the Holy Spirit work more and more actively in your life, developing yeah. fellowship and closeness with God. Yeah. And then the second year was a uh, Bible study track for discipleship. We had him watch some videos from the Urban Youth Workers Institute on just basic fundamentals of the faith, everything from apologetics which you like, yep. uh, and starting with creation all the way through. And, and so that guy had been through all of those things and really started to move from taking responsibility for his own spiritual growth to advance and say, I'm concerned about the spiritual growth of others. I'm concerned about the culture of my school. Yeah. And that's I when can, you begin to see yeah, That's real, the tipping point. Yeah, right. yeah. And then young people are realizing, I don't just have to be waiting to serve God when I'm old. Mm. I think that's the problem the churches get into is saying, youth of the church of tomorrow, and yes, they are, but if we wait till tomorrow to give them real leadership opportunities, we'll have no church left today. Absolutely, and that is one. That's 
That is, I couldn't have said it better myself. Uh, we'll be right back. My guest today is Nate Landis with Urban Youth Collaborative, uyc.org. Please uh, check out the ministry. It's a fantastic opportunity to make a radical difference in the schools. If you're concerned about school shootings, the real change is going to come uh, when the church begins to get more involved in the schools. That's when we're going to see heart change, not just uh, threatening people uh, with punishment. Not that that's bad, but um, we want to see heart change in the students. We'll be right back. For 36 years, Fast Lane Kayaking has helped people like you experience everything that's great about San Diego. Fast Lane makes fishing and water sports fun and easy. Hobie Cat kayaks feature a popular pedal system, not paddles, keeping your hands free as you fish. You no longer need to tow and gas up a boat to experience great San Diego fishing. Call or come in for your no-charge demo ride, 619-222-0766, fastlanesailing.com. At Dana Landing Marine. Arena across from SeaWorld, 619-222-0766. Luke Gibson of LG Equipment supports Educate for Life with Kevin Conover. Luke grew up in the construction industry and now serves LG's commercial and residential customers throughout Southern California. Whether you need grading, paving, hauling, demolition, on-site bulk water service, water trucks, tankers, and towers, call LG Equipment at 619-998-998. 0924. Learn more at lgequipment.com. 619-998-0924. Hi, I'm Marissa Conover, and I would love to help you buy or sell your home. I've worked as a realtor for more than 13 years, and as a San Diego native, my passion and experience will help make your move as peaceful as can be. Call me at 619-251-1577. That's 619-251-1577. Or visit Conover Home. Hi, this is Kevin Conover. Will you please donate to Educate for Life so we can share the truth of God's Word with kids in public schools? You can donate online at donate to EFL.org. The Bible used to be read in public schools on a regular basis prior to the 1960s, but today most kids are completely clueless when it comes to the content and the historical and scientific accuracy of the Bible. Please help us by donating online at donate to EFL.org. Hi, this is Jason Hall, president of Team Home Loans, a branch of Synergy One Lending. I just want to take this opportunity to thank Kevin Conover for the profound impact he's had on mine and my wife's spiritual life, as well as being an incredible teacher while our kids were his students. His knowledge and passion have taught us all how important it is to be defenders of our faith. It's our honor and privilege to support Kevin and his show. It is our sincere hope and prayer that you will continue to learn to be defenders of your faith through Kevin's radio show and through his Educate for Life teaching. Teachings. Thank you, Kevin, from the Hall family and Team Home Loans. I will cast my cares on you. Okay, welcome to Educate for Life. This is the, uh, the last segment we have here with Nate Landis. And uh, just a reminder, May 15th, I know it's still a ways away, but May 15th, we're putting on a huge event, uh, Educate for Life is, along with Eric Buer and Danny Ray. If you don't know who Danny Ray is, he's an incredible uh, illusionist who's also an evangelist. He shares the gospel all over the world. And we're putting an event down um, in Rancho San Diego. We're going to have a huge event for teachers, parents, administrators, um, all to encourage them, uh, kind of a lot of what Nate Landis is saying right here, getting involved with ministries like his, his, with FCA, uh, with all the different opportunities there are um, to, uh, we just had on um, uh, Mary Rothman with uh, the Sunshine Clubs, that's at the the lower education levels. So we're really trying to encourage um, parents, teachers, administrators, students, all those who love Jesus to get more involved in the schools. Uh, We need these kids to know about the Lord Jesus Christ, and we want to put uh, an end as much as is possible before Christ returns uh, to school shootings and the kind of uh, hostility that we see a lot of times in the schools. We want to rescue kids, teach them about Jesus Christ, and um, give them the peace that surpasses understanding, that only comes through a, a relationship with Christ. So uh, please join us. That's May 15th. You can register at EFLDannyRay.com, EFLDannyRay.com. Love to have you join us. So Nate, um, tell us about uh, what you do. You do this, I believe, every year. It's yes, called Project the ninth, 25. Yes, ninth year that we're going to do Project 25. The name comes from the parable of the talents that Jesus told in Matthew chapter 25, where mm-hmm. the rich man goes away, and before he takes his trip, he 
gives his wealth to three different stewards and they've got to put it to work for the good of others. So yeah. it's fun for me, Kevin. I feel sort of like a drug dealer for Jesus every spring because <laughs> we give away 50, this year it's 53. We open it up to any of the 97 schools that we are supporting student-led clubs at. And instead of just receiving information, we want kids to take what they've learned and put it to work to bring transformation. So there's five schools in Mexico and uh, just over 45 here in the States that that's are doing this. pretty incredible that you're getting down into Mexico it's, it's now. It's exciting. Yeah, we have a partnership <laughs> with a group called Metamorphosis that's doing really phenomenal school assemblies and trying to bring uh, positive direction to kids that are in danger of being steered in all different places, all different yeah. um, trajectories. So Project 25 is a way to end the year strong instead of saying, man, is it summer vacation yet? I can't wait to just run out the clock on the school year. Mm -hmm. These kids have to go on to the website and sign up to participate, they get a hundred dollar mini grant. This is they, on UIC. Uh, yeah, they, there's a UIC link there, but they also proj25.org is where the kids actually sign up for okay. Project Twenty Five, and so it's actually a perfect time to talk about this because these these starter kits are going out all over San Diego right now to all the different schools, and kids have to take the funds, read the parable of the talents. We don't want the money back. All we want is a 90-second YouTube video that tells the story of what they did to make a difference. And then we have a red carpet award celebration on May 11th, so right before your event. It's going to be at City View Church, and we play the winning videos. We have a worship night, and we honor kids who have done the most incredible work. We give out trophies to first, second, and third place for kids wow. that have done incredible stuff in the name of Jesus. So they're not just... Uh, praying, but they're putting their prayers into action, and they're even becoming the answer to their prayers yeah. by letting God use them with homelessness, with beach cleanups. We've had kids at Hoover High School a couple of years ago rescued some slaves from warlords in Sudan, so it's having an impact all over the world. And then locally, uh, in City Heights, there was a group of kids at Wilson Middle School last year. They won first place, first time a middle school kid ever won first place. Their team found out in their student body of a thousand kids, there were 60 homeless students in City Heights. And they said, that's unacceptable. If we're praying the Lord's Prayer and we're looking at the parable of the talents, putting together what we have and using it for the good of others, we can't accept this. Yeah. And so they built a clothing closet called Clark's Corner, Monroe Clark Middle. I, I said Wilson Middle. I meant Monroe Clark Middle. My apologies. Clark's Corner. And they, they basically took some clothes, and they, they took the $100 mini grant they got, turned it into $1,300, wow. and started a clothing closet for their friends in City Heights. So instead of having a handout, these kids get the dignity of going shopping and picking out something for themselves. They don't have to pay for it, but yeah. you get to go shop in their store and it was a project that these kids dreamt of because they were dreaming of a better world. That is amazing. It's so, it's so inspiring to see how, uh, you know, when somebody gets on fire for Christ, then they, they light somebody else's heart, and then they light That's somebody right. else's heart. It gets contagious. Yeah, and it just keeps Absolutely. going. And then before you know it, a whole community can be radically changed That's right. uh, through what God is doing through a few people. That's right. At yeah. the awards show, sometimes the youth pastors in the community, even if they haven't participated in Project 25, will bring their kids because they want to show middle school and high school kids what's, what's possible, possible yeah. when young people step up and make a difference. Because it's one thing to hear about it. Yeah. It's another thing to see it in real time and say, wow, look what these kids are up to. Yeah. So last year, 31,000 hours of volunteer service from young people went out into our community and the homeless people noticed, the kids in their schools noticed, and then Mayor Faulkner every year does a mayoral proclamation as well, which says May, whatever our awards night is, uh, this last year it was May the 11th. We're hoping yeah. you can do one for May, I'm sorry, May 12th last year, May 11th this year. And he proclaims Project 25 Day in the city of San Diego. And so kids are able to say, wow, Jesus notices, the people we're serving are noticing, our friends are noticing, and the mayor said we were doing a good job. Yeah, and so, this is what the, the Bible says. I mean, it says, do your good deeds in front of men that they may praise your Father in heaven. That's right. And we want God to get all the glory. Exactly. Absolutely. I love what you said, too, about how, um, you know, without the wind, those plants all died. That's right. And and we all need that a certain amount of wind um, to make us stronger and our roots go deeper. That's and right. To, and to seek the Lord. And... Um, uh, for for you parents who are listening, you know um, whether you're we're streaming live or or not. Um, I just want to encourage you in that too. That's important for Christian kids because I speak, you know, around a lot of different churches and youth groups, and I often will have parents go, "Hey, I raised my kids Christian. I did this, this, and this, and 
they're gone. That's right. Right. And so we want to do everything we can um, to prevent that from happening. And part of that process is allowing our kids, um, you know, in a safe way to be able to go out and make a difference and see the Lord work through them through something like Project 25. Right. It's exhilarating for kids to realize that God can change lives, not just others, but more so even the lives of the people that are serving yeah. more than being served. And in two months, kids are able to do some really meaningful projects. And we want them to say, look what God did with me for two months. Mm-hmm. What if I gave my whole life mm-hmm. to living for others? Yeah. And you know, the whole school shooting issue, this should be more, there should be a, a much bigger focus on what you're doing um, in the schools as a solution to the school shooting problem. Because I agree. when you touch a kid here and a touch a kid here and a touch a kid here, and you rescue a kid from loneliness here who's isolating himself right. and uh, then what happens is the more touches you have, the more the you, kids you have who are reaching out to somebody else around them, the less chance you're going to end up with somebody that's going to be, you know, uh, a, a shooter or something like that. That's right. I think if you're screaming at the darkness, that's one way to do it. But if you light a light, then the darkness is taken care of as well. Yeah. And there's something to say yes to and live for instead of just identifying ourselves by what we're against. Yeah. Or like you said before, you know, uh, guns in the classroom may uh, be a solution to a symptom, but there's a, a much uh, a bigger, and ultimately we don't want a bunch of people with, that have to live in, in prison gates and, right. and, and uh, you know, walking through uh, metal detectors and this is our lives here, more police on campuses. Right. Uh, we want to be free, but you can't be free if you don't have a governor on the heart and the governor on the heart is Jesus. That's right. That's the only way to bring ultimate changes from within. Absolutely. Nate, thanks for being on the program today. My pleasure. Thanks for having me back, Kevin. I Absolutely. enjoyed it. Absolutely uic.org if you want to check it out project25.org that's prog25.org my website's educateforlife.org i hope you enjoyed the program today it will air again on uh, this upcoming saturday please check it out there if you'd like and refer it to a friend and uh, thanks for being with us today god bless you all i hope you have a fantastic rest of your day did you miss part of today's program don't worry we're committed to helping you get the info you need Okay, that was dumb. But for real, visit educateforlife.com for podcasts and video recordings of the show and to sign up for the School of Unshakable Faith. Leave us your comments, compliments, questions, or concerns at 800-243-96.